The Fed has been reluctant to drop interest rates in line with Wall Street's expectations. So small businesses are the ones that are really getting hurt at the most. We did a uh, survey of over 450 entrepreneurs and half of them plan on raising prices again in the next 12 months. Hi, this is Nathan. Welcome to Independence Money. Why is inflation still so sticky and persistent? I think this has shocked a lot of people. It certainly shocked them when inflation went rip roaring high and then interest rates started to creep up. And I think everybody thought it would be a really quick solution. And then we get back to cheap money, low interest rates, being able to purchase things for a decent rate like cars and houses. Um, but that's simply not been the case and the Fed has been reluctant to drop interest rates in line with Wall Street's expectations. Why is that? Inflation is a loop, meaning if prices go up for say suppliers, in this case, you know, aluminum and cardboard are some of the most expensive things that are, we're having right now. Well, that's in a lot of parts of machinery and signs and, and structures and building materials. And then all the stuff that we're buying has to get shipped in to either Walmart or shipped to you via Amazon and cardboard. And those things that are, are really leading the, the spike in inflation. And what that causes is small businesses get squeezed and their margins come down. Even though they're raising prices, they're actually making less money. Well, then their consumers uh, and their employees they have to bear that cost too. So the employees say, hey, look, I'm having trouble keeping up with the cost of living. A lot of employers at the minimum offer a CPI cost of living adjustment to wages. And so then the labor price goes up in addition to that. And then it just goes on down the line. So small businesses are the ones that are really getting hurt at the most. I've got a statistic here. They did a, a survey of over 450 entrepreneurs and half of them plan on raising prices again in the next 12 months, where 64% of the surveys had said they'd increase them already in the last 12 months. And this becomes uh, true as labors and material have jumped over 45% in a short two year period. We got a one quote here from a fourth generation roofer that says we've increased more in the last four years than we have in 10. We simply don't have a choice. So I think my forecast here is inflation and interest rates are still going to be hanging around at least through the end of the year. They might taper them back on the interest rates. Inflation data is going to ebb and flow. Typically in the summer, we have in spikes in gasoline as people tend to travel more on vacations and things of that nature. And then for Wall Street, it sometimes takes a cooling period during the summer. We'll see if that happens now as we're sitting at the Dow at an all time high. But then in third and fourth quarter, it typically does really well, in, especially during election years. And so that is going to be all positive economic GDP news, which could bring that inflation question pending clear into 2025. Let me know your comments. Certainly appreciate your likes and subscribes. Y'all take care.